Good morning. Bobby, please remind me, what is our current equation for work? The one from AP Physics 1. Flippin' physics. Work equals FD cosine theta, where F is the force doing the work, D is the displacement of the object, and theta is the angle between those two vectors. Remember, we use the magnitudes of force and displacement in the work equation. And Bo, what are the units for work? Newtons times meters, or joules. Thanks. Now, it is very important you realize this equation is for the work done by a constant force. We will discuss work done by a non-constant force at a later date, but not today. So you can look forward to that. Yay! Yay. Now that we are doing calculus-based physics, we have the r position vector, which identifies the position of an object in three dimensions using unit vectors. Therefore, we can define the work done by a constant force as work equals force times change in r position of the object times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. So we are just replacing d with delta r? Yes. Okay. Also, now that we are doing calculus-based physics, work done by a constant force is defined using the dot product, which is also called the scalar product, because the dot product is a scalar. In other words, work done by a constant force equals the dot product of the force doing the work and the displacement of the object. Uh, can we review the dot product? Yeah, I do not remember the scalar product at all. The scalar product of vector a dot vector b equals a times b cosine theta. Do you not remember that? Uh. Uh. uh therefore, work done by a constant force equals the dot product of force and displacement, which equals force times displacement times cosine theta, just like we defined before. Right. right. But what is the dot product? Thank you, Bobby. Billy. The dot product is the magnitude of one vector times the magnitude of the projection of the second vector onto the first vector. What? Right. Let's look at two example vectors, A and B. The dot product of A and B equals the magnitude of A times B cosine theta, where B cosine theta is the length of the projection of B onto A, or, in this case, the value of B in the x direction. In other words, the scalar product of A and B equals A times B cosine theta. Okay, so A dot B equals the length of A times the length of the parallel side of the right triangle, or B cosine theta. I guess that makes sense. Also, please remember that the dot product is commutative. What does commutative mean again? The order of the two vectors does not matter. That is what commutative means. Oh, right. A dot B equals B dot A. Commutative. The order is irrelevant. Thanks. That means we could look at our vector diagram example as B dot A or the magnitude of vector b times the projection of a onto b, or a cosine theta. That kind of makes sense. I mean, I see how a b cosine theta equals b a cosine theta. Sure. Right. Thank you. Now let's do a simple unit vector example to help us recall how to solve the dot product using unit vectors. Vector a equals 4i plus 3j, and vector b equals 2i plus 1j. Bobby, please solve for the dot product of a and b. Uh, I think, is it like 4 times 2 plus 3 times 1? Yeah, that sounds familiar. You multiply all the i values together and all the j values together, and then add those together, but... I don't know why we do it that way, but it works out to be 11. Yeah. Okay, let's understand why this works. First off, just like if this were two standard binomial expressions, like the quantity 4 plus 3 times the quantity 2 plus 1, we use the FOIL method to get 4 times 2 plus 4 times 1 plus 3 times 2 plus 3 times 1. We also use the FOIL method on the dot product to get 4i dot 2i, plus 4i dot 1j, plus 3j dot 2i, plus 3j dot 1j. Bobby, see if you can continue from there. What does FOIL stand for again? First, outer, inner, last. All right. Multiply the first terms of the binomial expression together, then the outer terms of the binomial expression, then the inner terms, then the last terms, and add that together. Math is fun. Yep. 
Bobby? Oh, okay. Um, 4i dot 2i equals 4 times 2 times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. Both i vectors are in the same positive x direction, so the angle is 0. The cosine of 0 equals 1, so that is just 4 times 2. 4i dot 1j equals 4 times 1 times cosine of, well, i and j are in the positive x and positive y directions respectively, so the angle between those two is 90 degrees. And the cosine of 90 degrees equals 0. Right, so, so that term equals 0. And the angle is the same for the next term, that is 3 times 2 times cosine of 90, and therefore equals 0. The last term, 3j dot 1j, equals 3 times 1 times Again, the cosine of zero degrees because j and j are in the same positive y direction. So that is why the dot product of a and b works out to be all of the i terms multiplied together plus all of the j terms multiplied together. Uh, the other terms all work out to be zero because they all have a cosine of 90 degrees. Correct, Bobby. And going back to the projection description of the scalar product. When the angle between the two vectors is 90 degrees, the projection of one vector onto the other vector equals zero. So the dot product equals zero. There is no projection of one vector onto the other vector when the two vectors are perpendicular to one another. So the dot product of two vectors at 90 degrees to one another equals zero. Okay, let's do an example finding the work done by a constant force using unit vectors. Let's say we have an object which goes through a displacement equal to 3.0i plus 1.0j meters while, it's, while experiencing a force equal to 4.0i plus 2.0k newtons. Bo, please find the work done on the object by the force. Sure. Work equals the dot product of force and displacement, or the dot product of those two vectors. So 3 times 4 plus 1 times 2, or... 14 joules. No. What? Oh. That's a that's a K unit vector and not a J unit vector. <laughs> Oops. So it's three times four plus one times zero plus zero times two, and that equals twelve joules. Correct, Bo. That is something to be really careful to notice. You have to multiply all the i unit vector coefficients together, or 3 times 4, and then multiply all the j unit vector coefficients together, or 1 times 0. 0 because the r position vector does not have a component in the j direction. And then multiply all the k unit vectors together, or 0 times 2. 0 because the force vector does not have a component in the k direction. This really is something my students often overlook, so please make sure to read the unit vectors carefully. Mr. P? Yes, Bobby? Bo showed a lot less work than I did. Can we just show what Bo did? Oh yeah, Th thanks Bobby. I had you do it that way at first in order to help us remember why the shorter version Bo just did works. It's fine to just show the work Bo did. Great, thanks. All right. So far, everything we have done has just been abstract numbers. Let's look at a more real example. Let's say a 6.9 Newton force is applied at 59, 59 degrees to the left of the negative y axis to a shopping cart. The shopping cart is displaced 7.0 meters to the left. If this force applied keeps the shopping cart moving at a constant velocity, what is the work done on the shopping cart? Billy, please start by putting all of our known values into unit vector form. Well, the displacement delta r equals 7.0 meters to the left, or negative 7.0 i meters. The force applied as given is neither directly in the x or y direction, therefore we need to break it into its components. The force applied equals... In the x direction, the force applied is to the left, so negative force applied in the x direction times unit vector i, the force applied in the x direction equals 6.9 times the sine of 59 degrees because the angle, theta, is with the vertical. In the y direction, the force applied is down, 
So minus the force applied in the y direction times unit vector j. The, the force applied in the y direction equals 6.9 times the cosine of 59 degrees. Cosine because, again, theta is with the vertical. Do you want me to find those numbers? No, that's okay, Billy. Bobby can determine the work done by the force applied from here. Bobby? Yeah, uh, the work done by the force applied equals the dot product of the force applied and the object's displacement, or the dot product of the two vectors Billy just determined. Multiplying the i terms together gives us negative 6.9 sine 59 times negative 7, plus the j terms, or negative 6.9 cosine 59 times 0. Right, right. That whole term equals 0. The i and j directions are normal to one another, and we get... Um, 41.401 newton meters, or 41 joules with two sig figs. Very nice, Bobby. You are correct. The work done by the force applied on the shopping cart is 41 joules. Billy, please determine the work done by the force of gravity on the cart. Absolutely. The work done by the force of gravity equals the scalar product of the force of gravity and the displacement of the cart, which equals... Well, the force of gravity is down, so negative mass times acceleration due to gravity in the j direction dot negative 7.0i. Oh, and that equals zero because i and j are at 90 degrees to one another, and the cosine of 90 degrees equals zero. The force of gravity does zero work on the shopping cart because it is normal to the direction of the displacement of the cart. <laughs> that makes sense. And Bo, what about the work done by the force normal on the cart? That will also equal zero because the force normal is up or in the positive j direction and also perpendicular to the displacement of the cart. The force normal does zero work on the cart. Thanks. Lastly, let's determine the work done by the force of friction on the shopping cart. Bobby, please. Well, the work done by the force of friction equals the dot product of force of friction and the displacement of the cart. Let's draw the free body diagram. Force normal is up, force of gravity is down, force applied is 59 degrees to the left of the negative y-axis, force of friction is to the right, opposite the direction the cart is moving. That means the work done by the force of friction equals force of friction times unit vector i dot negative 7.0i. That's just negative 7 times the force of friction, so we need the force of friction. Uh, the, the cart is moving at a constant velocity, so we sum the forces in the x direction to get force of friction minus force applied in the x direction, all equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. However, because it is moving at a constant velocity, the acceleration of the cart in the x direction equals zero, so the force of friction equals the force applied in the x direction, and that equals, well, force applied times the sine of theta, because theta is with the vertical. Okay, so the work done by the force of friction equals negative 7 times force applied times sine theta, or negative 7 times 6.9 times sine of 59 degrees, or negative 41.401, or negative 41 joules with two sig figs. Uh, why are the magnitudes of the work done by the force applied and the work done by the force of friction equal? E except the work done by the force of friction is negative. Good question. Let's talk about what this means. Remember the shopping cart is moving at a constant velocity. What we have shown is that while the cart is moving at a constant velocity, all the energy being put into the cart via the force applied is being dissipated by the force of friction. And notice that when we add up all the, add up the work done by every force acting on the cart while it is moving at a constant velocity, we get zero. In other words, the net work on an object equals zero when the object is moving at a constant velocity. This is called foreshadowing. Blatant foreshadowing. I don't get it. Do you think we are supposed to? I don't know. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you. I still want my two dollars!